Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to our thought for the day. It seems that we've been doing this a quite a long time and I hope you still enjoy tuning in at half past 12. Um, if you have any thoughts about things you might like to see happen on Thought for the Day, um, please feel free to drop me a line, minister at secchurch.org.uk. Uh, or leave a comment somewhere on our YouTube or our Facebook account. We'd love to hear from you. Um, or just if you've got anything you particularly like, let me know as well. It's always good to have a bit of feedback. I hope you're well. Of course, today is Friday. Don't forget to tune in on Sunday morning in the same places, Facebook and YouTube, for our live stream service. Anyone is welcome. Please invite friends and family anywhere in the world. Welcome to join in. We just want to gather as many people to come and worship God on a Sunday morning at half past ten. Yesterday was a special day in the Christian calendar. It was Ascension Day. If you're not familiar with Ascension Day, Ascension Day marks that moment in Jesus' ministry, 40 days after his resurrection, 40 days after Easter Sunday. He spent that time talking to his disciples, explaining the kingdom of God, explaining the scriptures. On the 40th day, the most amazing thing happens. As the disciples are gathered around Jesus, suddenly he ascends. So rather than descending, he ascends back up to heaven and the Bible tells us that as he goes up and up into the skies hidden from their sight by a cloud and then and in Acts chapter 1 where this story is and the, the disciples are caught staring up at the sky and the angel says what are you looking for he will return the same manner that he left and it's called ascension day because it's that day in the Christian calendar when we remember Jesus returned to heaven But just before he returns to heaven, just before he ascends back to heaven, back to the right-hand side of his Father in heaven, Jesus delivers his last earthly words. And they're really significant. And they're found in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Of course, he says a bit more before the bit I'm about to read. But these words particularly are really, really intriguing and important. He says, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. A person's final words are significant for a number of reasons. They perhaps kind of complete a life's work. It may be the final word someone says. Last words are often what reveal a character, reveal uh, what's going on in someone's heart. They can be final words to repair a relationship or say significant things to a loved one for the final time. Some examples of some very different last words are these. Groucho Marx, in his final words, apparently said, this is no way to live. You can almost imagine the the moustache and the glasses. This is no way to live were his final words. Winston Churchill's last words were, I'm bored with it all. Just sort of, you can almost hear that Churchill expression, I'm bored with it all, fed up with this. And Joan Crawford in her unmistakable uh, style, shouts at her housekeeper apparently in her final moments. Her housekeeper had been praying for her and she shouted out, don't you dare ask God for help. And of course, in all three of those examples, all very different. They kind of sum up the person's character, perhaps bring an end to a life's work as well. And these here in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 are Jesus' final earthly words. And it's a very important difference. He wasn't dying at this moment. He was going back. He's very much alive now. We believe he's at the right hand of the Father. We believe he will come back to judge the living and the dead. But these were his final earthly words. The end of his earthly ministry, that three-year period, was coming to an end. And these are the last things he was going to say on earth, face-to-face with his disciples. And that's what makes these words very, very significant. What Jesus does in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, is set the tone for the next 2,000 years of Christian history. He says two very significant things. Yes, there's three very significant things. But the first thing is, he says um, in verse 8, let me read the first half again. He says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. He sets the power of the church. The church, the the body of believers that come after those 12 disciples, are going to be a people filled with power. We're to be people with power and might, not of our own accord, but that God flows through us. We're to be people who are obedient and holy, who are faithful to Jesus, our Saviour, our Rabbi, our King. And when we're faithful to him, he will fill us. The Holy Spirit will fall upon us. Looking forward to Pentecost, of course, just 10 days later, when they would speak in other tongues and thousands would become Christians for the first time. That sets the tone. The church is to be a place of power, not human power, not abuse of power, but an authentic power of God working through us as we preach the gospel, as we love the lost, as we obey with all of our heart, mind and soul. But then he goes on to say this in that same verse, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria 
and to the ends of the earth. And for the early Christians, they took that verse extremely seriously. They went out expecting to be a people that uh, God would use for the miraculous, for the incredible. But they wanted and they expected to go out and preach the gospel. So they went out into foreign lands. And in fact, by, within a very short space of time, they were hitting places like Spain and India, preaching the good news of Jesus. So Jesus, in his final earthly words, sets the tone sets the mission and sets the power. But note the word will. He doesn't say as he leaves his disciples, if you'd like to receive power, just ask from the Holy Spirit. He doesn't say, when you can fit it in, you might be my witnesses. He says, you will be. But what are they to be witnesses of? They're to be witnesses of the resurrection of Jesus. And what's really interesting is that verse isn't just spoken to 12 disciples. He's spoken to every single disciple that has ever lived since. So Jesus says to you, if you're a disciple this afternoon, you'll receive power by the Holy Spirit and you will be my witnesses to all the ends of the earth. The the command on God's people is sobering and significant and exciting. And in these days of uncertainty, we are to be powerfully ready to preach the good news of Jesus Christ, to tell people there is a God that he loves the world so much despite its sin and brokenness that he sent his son to pay the ultimate cost to take all our sin so through faith in jesus as god's son who lived and died and lives evermore we can have everlasting life freedom forgiveness and a place in god's heaven forever and ever but note the word will and so today's thought i guess as we finish this week that's sort of been loosely about words is will you Let your words be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Will you leave your couch or wherever you're watching this and go out, maybe through social media in these days, and will you be a witness? Not that you are a Christian or you attend church. Will you be a witness that this Jesus we speak of is still alive? What an amazing thought. What an amazing challenge. But let's use our words this Friday to bless other people. God bless you. And uh, hopefully we'll see you Sunday, but we'll see you again Monday otherwise. Goodbye.